to the Lord this morning, CGS number 24, praise the King of glory, he is God alone. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you that may be watching us over the internet and say our God here will bless you and your God there will bless us as well. And this is the Apostolic Faith Mission, this branch is in Fenham Road in London. Any of you that is living quite close, please you can come and join our service, this is just the start of the service. But if you are living very far away, we wish you a very blessed viewing. Uh, and um, in the evening, you may want to join us. We have a Bible quiz that reminds us of all the good things that we have studied in the past. However, we want to proceed with the devotional service. And our song leader this morning is Brother Delight as we sing from CGS number 24.
Glory be to Jesus. We're going to sing again uh, from the same hymn book, hymn number 23. Hymn number 23. We'll take the first verse and the third verse while seated. Hymn number 23. Uh, we'll take just the first verse and the second verse and the third verse while seated. song is 506, 506. Be glad and rejoice, yeah. all ye that are upright in heart, and ye that have made him your choice, be speed, sadness, and sorrow depart. Uh, we'll take the first, the first, the third, and the fourth verse again while seated. Uh, so we'll take the first, the third, and the fourth verses while seated. 506.
for prayer uh, will be hymn 509. 509. 509. They that trust in the Lord are secure. We'll take the first verse and the fourth verse uh, while standing. For those of us that can stand, uh, we're going to take the first and the fourth verse uh, while standing um, and remain standing to be led in prayer after the fourth verse. your holy name. We give you all the glory, the honor, the majesty for all that you have done for us, for giving us an opportunity to come into your house and to hear your word. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the songs that we have sang and this song that your grace is sufficient for us. Lord, you know our situations, you know our problems, you know everything about us. We thank you so much for this, your grace, your love, your kindness. Lord, we believe those of us that may not have enough faith, Lord, increase our faith. That to have faith and trust in you, that your grace is sufficient to carry us through every situation in life. And that at the end, Lord, that we will see you face to face. Do this all for us, to your glory, for in Jesus' name we pray.
Bible reading for this morning is taken from the book of Acts, <coughs> chapter 12. Book of Acts 12, we are reading from verses 1 to 10. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Three. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Four. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of the soldiers of, of the soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Five. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Six. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Seven. And, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him Amen. and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Eight. And the angel said unto him, Get thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Nine. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Ten and last. When they were past the first and the second world, they came into the iron gate that led unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord, accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him.
Chapter 8, verses 26 through to 28. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through to 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. God is here. Amen. And glory be to his name. Amen. We live uh, in a world of crisis. Um, I'm, I'm a bit baffled when I think of the amount of knowledge we have in this our time when compared to previous uh, generations before us. In fact, maybe not even a generation has passed because I, I remember when I went to school, uh, we, we, we didn't use calculators. We, we had uh, some kind of logbooks that we used and that or things that were called algorithms. And, uh, uh, something called Corsens. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a long while. Uh, but these days, um, you know, you, you have it at the tip of your, uh, of your fingers. Um, there's calculators, uh, there's computers, uh, smartphones. Remember when I first saw my, uh, the first time I saw a, a mobile phone, really big. We used to call it a brick where I come from. Uh, and only the rich and affluent could walk around with them and they had these shiny cases and, you know, that was technology. Uh, and, and I'm fascinated now when I think of the amount of knowledge we have access to. Uh, one would, be, would, be, would expect that uh, with so much knowledge and with so much advancement in technology, uh, we would have solved a lot of the problems we have in this world. Uh, but it, it doesn't look like uh, those problems are going to go away anytime soon. Uh, I was talking to a young man who was getting ready for uh, his last exams a couple of weeks ago, and he told me he was stressed. 
Uh, now that came as a surprise to me. Uh, you know, you're preparing for G, 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 S, GCSEs, and uh, uh, how can that be stressful, you know? Yeah. You, you have computers. We didn't have computers. We, we used to walk to school, and I was a naughty boy. My parents took me to a boarding, sent me to a boarding school. Not, not the nice kinds, but a mission school, uh, where everyone is treated the same. You, you do your own laundry. You learn how to make your your bed. I wish I'd listened to my mother. But uh, yeah, there was crisis at that time for me. But to think that uh, GSC is a crisis, uh, GCSC, yeah. I'm a foreigner as you can imagine. Um, yeah, they, 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 life is full of a lot more. Uh, after exams then comes the real life. Uh, may God help us this morning. Uh, we, as children of God, have uh, a precious privilege uh, in that we can have faith in God. Amen. Um, many a times when you get into a crisis, uh, you look to, you know, some people that you count on, you know. Uh, I've been broke before, like literally run out of money. And uh, you call on a friend and say, uh, you know, I really do need your help. And they'll tell you sometimes, you know, ah, well, I can't. I can't help you. I'm in a crisis of my own. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've come across different situations in your life. But there's one who is faithful. Yes. The Bible uh, uh, tells us he, he is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. The first and the last. Amen. You know, the beginning Amen. and the end. You know, he was there before anything was. From the foundation of the world as we know it. I love the first verse of the Bible. It says, in the beginning, God. That, that's, that, 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 that's, that phrase for me has been a mainstay through many crises. And, and this morning we just want to look into God's word and, and continue with that uh, theme from the Sunday school this morning. We're going to be talking about faith in God. In Acts chapter 12, we, we see a, a really inspiring account of how God has been faithful to the saints in the past. Um, King Herod wanted to he was a really proud man. And he, as the Bible says in verse 1, now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Now the church here refers to the saints. Um, and we thank God of the, for, for our church, the apostolic faith church. And we thank God for all of, all of, all of you that attend the, the apostolic faith church. But there is a church that when God looks down on earth, calls his own church. Amen. And members of those church are registered through what we call the born again experience. Amen. When we come to a realization that we are sinners and that we have come short of the glory of God. And, and we believe God's word that when we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us all of our sins. Amen. Now when we come in prayer and faith believing, uh, the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that was the children of God. And uh, once God has saved us, we are gone to live a, a marvelous life, a life of victory, uh, a life of, of peace and, and joy. But that doesn't take away uh, crisis from our life. Yes. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. So Herod decided to vex the church. You know, um, and verse, verse 2 it says and he killed James the brother of John with the sword may God help us Amen. I mean he made play of the saints of God so much that he killed one of them and because he saw it pleased the Jews he proceeded further to take Peter also then were the days of unleavened bread you recall this at this time, the work of God was really prosperous in Antioch, and uh, 
You know, the saints were rejoicing. We, you, you read in the previous chapter of even prophets going there. And, uh, you know, there was so much ministry. And yet the, jo the Jews at the time were displeased with that. And there came a crisis. So James was killed. We live in a time also, maybe not so much in the UK, we have our cha uh, challenges of our own. But I, I, I remember not too long ago, some, some Christians were, were slaughtered um, for believing, for just professing that they are Christians. Uh, it hasn't happened to us yet. Um, but I feel we live also in a time of crisis where our very faith the foundations of our faith, the principles of our faith are being challenged. One person, uh, you know, uh, in their own restaurant uh, was kind enough to share the word of God through a screen in that restaurant. And uh, it made the news because somebody got offended that the Bible scriptures, as they're currently displayed, were displayed in a restaurant. I believe that's a time of crisis. I believe it's a time when our faith is going to be challenged. Peter warned the saints and said, uh, don't be afraid because of the fiery tempest that will befall you. Because it has happened to saints before. I, we are not exempt. No. By we, I'm talking about the saints, children of God, are not exempt from that kind of crisis. But glory be to God. Amen. God is our refuge and strength. Amen. The song says he is a present help in time of trouble. Faith brings to us peace. It also gives us courage and confidence in God. But what crisis does is it brings to us doubt. We begin to doubt. Sometimes we, we lose focus and even forget God's promises. It produces fear. Crisis can tend to produce uncertainty. We become so unsure. Sometimes we, we are an anxious. But this morning I just want to remind us that Jesus is still the same. Amen. He's the same yesterday. Yes. Today I like the today bit of it because it means this very moment, Amen. Jesus is still the same. Amen. Amen. The Jesus who, you know, when his hem, the hem of his garment was touched, a problem that had taken 12 years. Many physicians had tried and those physicians had failed. A problem that had taken all of that blessed lady's savings and investments. Problem that had made her totally broke, <coughs> totally despondent, unwanted, and you know, she she was in a in a terrible crisis. And yet, when she touched Jesus' <coughs> ham, the hem of his garment, she was made whole. Yes. It's the same Jesus we had of this morning, yes. who, who who raised Jairus' daughter. Glory be to His name. Amen. He can still be Jesus of your crisis today. Amen. He works in mis mysterious ways. I'm not going to stand here and tell you this is how it's going to work out. But all I know is Jesus can. And he will solve the problem. Amen. Same God who looks after the lily of the valley. Yes. The God who feeds the, the birds. He says don't worry. I will be your God. Amen. And the key to those blessings is through prayer. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Have faith in God. Ask and it shall be given you. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. 
Luke 18, 1. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Glory be to your name. Amen. We thank God. When we are in a crisis, we should pray the more. It says here, he spake a parable there unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. She was in a crisis. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, Yet because this will, that he will avenge them speedily. Amen. God allows his elect to just wade on through the crisis. And yet he's still with us. He says, I will uphold you Amen. with the arm of righteousness. Amen. David says, uh, and though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. For thou art with me. Amen. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. In, in our crisis, we can still have faith in God. Because God ha, ha, has promised that he will speedily avenge us. Amen. In the realm of our time, it may look like this has gone on for too long. Oh, but God is faithful. The, the song that the choir rendered to us says, uh, have faith in God. He watches over his own. He cannot fail. He will prevail. Yes. Have faith in God. Glory be to God. Yes. But prayer is hard work. I, I don't know about you, but there's been times when, even when I kneel, kneel down, the burden is so heavy, I, I don't know what to to pray. I, I don't know what to say. And yet the Spirit of God comes down. Amen. You know, in a marvelous way. And such peace be, begins to fill my heart. Amen. I don't know what your experience has been, but prayer indeed is, is hard work. Amen. How often when a prayer meeting is called, uh, do, we, do we see a full house? That prayer indeed is hard work. Sometimes the Spirit of God is uh, uh, prompting us to wake up in the morning. Or maybe it's not even morning yet. And yet just, there's this nudge that just comes into, into your heart. And it's time to pray. And the bed never feels more comfortable than that moment. Because prayer is hard work. Romans 15.30. Turn with me if you can. Uh, to Romans chapter 15, verse 30. Now I beseech you, uh, this, this was Paul. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Amen. That was Paul. You know, Paul, the hero of faith. Yeah? Paul who declared, who can separate us from the love of God? Hunger? He described all forms of crisis. And yet, he, he, he is beseeching the saints. He says, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me. He says, strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. You know, strive in prayer. A song that was written by one of our uh, uh, saints that have gone by. Uh, it says, uh, the soul that will live close to Jesus Amen. is he who spends much time in prayer. Amen. And it says, 
would God that all people would pray, for it is prayer that moves mountains away. So those mountains of doubt are sure to move out if unceasingly, brother, my sister, you pray. May God help us to pray. Matthew 18, 19 to 20. Matthew 18, 19 to 20. So we, as we pray, we need to, 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 to keep faith in God's word. Keep believing God's word. And trusting God that indeed he will fulfill his word in our lives. Matthew chapter 18. I'll read from verse 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them, of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. So Paul was standing on this promise of God. And that's why he was appealing to the saints. I beseech you, strive with me in prayer. Let us pray together. Because what we shall agree on the earth as touching anything that we ask. Glory be to God. Amen. It shall be done Amen. by the Father which is in heaven. Amen. And we are gathered here. It's not just two of us. But we can pray. Amen. for the salvation of souls. Yes. And God will answer our prayers. Because it says, what two or three, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so, if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything that we shall ask, it shall be done Amen. for us yes. of the Father which is in heaven. I love that part. The word of God was made simple. Yes. Even the simple-minded can receive it. Amen. Even the most intelligent people can still receive the word of God. Of course. But it is foolishness to some. I mean, to imagine that your problem the challenge you are facing right now, as big as it is, all it takes is for you to kneel down, call on Jesus' name, and it will be solved. Amen. For some, that is difficult to believe. For some, that is difficult to comprehend. Think of that lady. For 12 years, she had gone to a physician and another. My sister could totally articulate them in a wonderful way. She, st she talked of... Uh, gynecologist, a pathologist. I'll, I'll need to go and research on some of those. because <laughs> There are many gists there. But for a simple problem to do with blood, you know, a flow of blood. Um, but yes, we don't have to know what kind of physicians we have in this world. Thank God for our doctors. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. By his stripes. Amen. We are healed. Amen. By his stripes, I am healed. Amen. By his stripes, you are healed. Amen. It doesn't matter what kind of a disease it is. It doesn't matter what kind of an ailment it is. It could be a terminal illness, they call them. But with Jesus, it shall be healed. Amen. The Bible tells us as many as were brought to him with diverse sickness, all manner of diseases, any kind of infirmity, he healed them all. Yes. And he still does today. Amen. He's just the same today. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. But when we pray, we must remember what happened in the time when Peter was was taken up, you know. Uh, Herod wanted to make a spectacle out of Peter's death. Mm. Remember, this is the Peter who stood up and said, uh, you men of Galilee, 
and he preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. And many people were saved. And so I believe King Herod wanted to make a big statement. I, I find it a bit funny when uh, philanthropists go on TV to display the goodness that they've done. I'm not saying it's bad. But I just love the Bible way, you know. The Bible says, don't let your right hand know what the left hand has done. Yes. Have you come across that? And the God who is in heaven will reward you? Yeah. I love that way. I love the Bible way. And, and King Herod, the proud man that he was, wanted to make a spectacle. Even though, if you read down uh, that, that, that chapter 12, further down, even though Peter had been released, and many other people then lost their lives because he couldn't understand how Peter, who had been chained, right, and was with guards in a prison with so many gates, could walk out, and nobody knew how that had happened. He just couldn't comprehend it. And yet our God is able to do it. Amen. So he, he even went on, you know, to showcase himself. The Bible says pride goeth before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. And that pride led to his destruction. And yet, when the church were, was praying for him, I don't believe they were trying to impress each other with their prayers. Now I'm going, I'm going to pray the loud, loudest so that the saints can know I'm the one who prayed for Peter. No, I don't believe they were doing that. Prayer is not about impressing each other. You know how, how long we pray. We don't pray long to impress each other. But we pray and tarry in prayer because the Bible says pray without ceasing. We need to pray until we get an answer from God. We read of a mighty man of God who had prayed and the answer had been released from heaven. But how many of us know we will wrestle not against flesh and blood. But the Bible tells us of principalities, powers of darkness, spiritual weakness, wickedness in, in high places. And that's why we need to, to tarry in prayer. The weapons of this warfare are not carnal, but the Bible says they are mighty through God. And how do we battle? In prayer. And that's why we pray. So when we tarry long in prayer, it's not to impress each other, but when we're waiting on God. May God help us to pray. Yeah. Say, so may God help us to pray. Yeah. Says, so men ought to pray, always to pray and not uh, uh, faint. And that prayer must be focused. Because he said, ask and eat shall be given. We need to be specific. They, they were praying for, for Peter to be released. I mean, they prayed so much and prayed. And in the dead of night, as they were praying, uh, God in his wonderful way answered the prayer. And yet they, they were still fervent in prayer. Because they had not seen Peter in their midst. They believed God was going to release him. A young lady goes to open the door, you know, Peter gets to the door and he knocks uh, uh, and she sees Peter. And I want to believe she, she shut the door <laughs> and went back into the house and said, no, Peter is here. The saints didn't believe it. But God works in mysterious ways. Yes. When you least expect it, God is going to come through. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Shall we read uh, just verse 6 and 7 of uh, Acts chapter 12? And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night. So it was imminent. Just like James' death, Peter's death was imminent. 
in King Herod's time. Remember, he was the most powerful person uh, in the land at the time. And as far as he was concerned, his word was as good as, as accomplished. Peter was going to die. So it says, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison. I'll make God's light shine in your crisis today. And he smote Peter on the side. And raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Amen. It seems the word of God is saying, Don't lose sleep over your problem. Amen? Amen. Peter was sleeping. That's amazing. I mean, he, was, he was about to die. And he was sleeping. Verse 6, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. He was bound with two chains. The keepers before the door kept the prison. There was no way Peter was going to escape. And yet he was sleeping. Be still. Yes. And know that I am God. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide. Amen. Glory be to his name. Amen. And I will say of you, God, you are my refuge. Yes. God is good. Amen. It doesn't mean the, the, the problem won't be there. It will be there. And uh, maybe I'm speaking to someone today you know the problem is, is there. It's real. Sure. It's happening now. Sure. But with Jesus yeah. in the vessel, yeah. smile at that storm. Yeah. One person said, Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. He's the master of land and sea. The Bible tells us there is nothing that was made. Everything was that we see is here because Jesus let it be. Yeah. Yeah. He says, peace be still. Oh. Well, one time the children of Israel, after coming out of Egypt in a miraculous way, get to a, a place and, you know, there's no escape. And the armies of pharaohs are coming. And they started to murmur and complain. And, and, and they're, they're crying to Moses. Sometimes uh, we need to understand that the people of God, you know, our pastors uh, are just what the Bible says they are. They are human beings. They are people. They are men like us, subject to the same challenges and, you know, infirmities and, uh, and, and things we, 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 we come across. And we need to, to pray for them. But there's one we must call upon. And I thank God for this Apostolic Faith Church. That there is one name. Amen. One name that is exalted above all names. Amen. And that is the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's the name we call upon. Glory be to God. Amen. And the saints were calling on that name that night. So much that Peter could sleep. When we see our brother in crisis, let's not rejoice. Today, it's him. Tomorrow, it could be you. But how good will it be when you know you're in the crisis and that very brother is praying for you? Because God intervened when we pray for him. By this shall all men know that we are his disciples if we have love one for another. And so they prayed. Glory be to God. Amen. Peter was no longer afraid of death. That's what faith in God does. 
Job says, uh, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He had lost everything. I mean, totally everything. He was a rich man, you know, a man who feared God. God was really proud of him, and yet God allowed him to go through a crisis. How wonderful it is when God is with us. But sometimes crisis comes into our lives because of sin. If it is the reason for crisis in our life, if sin is the reason for crisis in our lives, all we need to do is repent. May God help us. So when we suffer because we've fallen short of God's grace, we should not just strive in prayer and pray for the crisis to go away. We should pray for God to restore the joy of our salvation. David says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That should be our prayer. So prayer, although we say we should pray, prayer is not an excuse for us to be lazy. God answers prayer, no doubt. But if you are a father in a home, and your children are hungry. And God has blessed you with good health. And God has blessed you with a job. God has blessed you with a way and a means to care for your family. We should use God's opportunities and, and those blessings that God has blessed in our lives. It is not an excuse for us to be lazy and say, my God is able. I'm not going to show up at work. You know, God supplies every need. He, you know, he dresses the lily of the valley. You know, he feeds the birds of the air. You know, who tills for them? That's not what we're saying about prayer. 11. And when Peter was come to himself, Acts chapter 12, verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know for a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose, name, whose surname was Mark, to, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to Hacken, Named Rhoda. Named Rhoda. Glory be to God. Amen. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, They. It is his angel. He said, I will show you great and mighty things, Amen. which thou knowest not. Amen. Today, Amen. our God is going to do it for us. Amen. So much that we will be confused. Little girl comes along road and says, well, Peter is here. She, 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 she couldn't contain herself. And yet they were praying. You know how we treat our children sometimes. We're really praying and uh, the little one just keeps tugging at you. You know? And that's, I believe, how they were treating Rhoda. You shut up, you. You are mad. Jesus. Tonight, release Peter. And yet he was at the door. <laughs> May God help us. Amen. May God help us. Amen. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Psalm 121, verse 4. Psalm 121, verse 4. 
Psalm 121, verse 4. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And that's the God whom we say. We want to pray today. Amen. Believing that God is able to, to, to answer our prayer. Amen. Don't focus on your crisis. Don't demand to understand. We don't need to understand. Amen. We just need to call on Jesus. Amen. Remember the resource of prayer. Prayer changes things. Amen. The prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Amen. Put your eyes on God and rest in his love. Expect God's power to move in his time. God's time is always best. <coughs> Expect God's power to move in God's way. Amen. And you'll have a reason to rejoice. Amen. May God bless you as you come to the altar to pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the word of inspiration. Thank you for the word of life. Thank you for the message you've sent to us. Oh Lord, as we go on our knees, teach us to pray. Lean ever to lean on you. And that you will solve all that we have brought to your table. For we pray in Jesus' name.